Hi everyone, I'm Tanya Rivero. Thank you for joining us. President Biden is preparing for his first face-to-face -face meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin since taking office. The trip caps off a week of discussions with foreign leaders at NATO and the G7 summits. The White House says the president sought input from U.S. allies on how to approach tomorrow's talks in Switzerland. President Biden last met the Russian leader 10 years ago when he was still vice president. At that meeting, Mr. Biden says he told Putin, quote, I'm looking into your eyes and I don't think you have a soul. The president is expected to confront Putin on Russia's latest aggressive actions, including allegations of election meddling and cyber hacking. CBS News' Natalie Brand has a preview of tomorrow's summit. America is back on the global scene. Uh, it's great news. After a warm welcome by European Union leaders, President Biden and the EU talked trade this morning in Brussels. So I think we have an enormous opportunity. The U.S. and EU announced an end to a Boeing Airbus trade dispute over airline subsidies and agreed to a five-year suspension of tariffs imposed during the Trump administration. It's overwhelming the interest of the United States of America to have a great relationship with NATO and with the EU. I have a very different view than my predecessor. This show of cooperation with European allies is deliberate. It comes ahead of Wednesday's face-to-face -face meeting between President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin in Switzerland. He is a uh, worthy adversary. The high-stakes summit follows recent cyber attacks on U.S. infrastructure by criminals likely based in Russia. Putin has denied the allegations, but Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo tells CBS News it's clear who's behind the attacks. Uh, I think we all know that that isn't true. There is plenty of proof that a number of cyber attacks in the past few years uh, have come from Russia. President Biden is also expected to confront Putin about Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the fate of jailed opposition leader Alexei Navalny. 